जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण आय पे मो बेसेंस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्रीमद जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आय पे मो बेसेंस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आय पे मो बेसेंस टू आवर पूर्व आचार्य आय पे मो बेसेंस टू आवर ट्वेल्व वालवार्स आय पे मो बेसेंस टू मदर लक्ष्मी and i pay my obeisances to lord shri man narayan i welcome all of you here physically at the shri narayan dham in durban south africa i welcome those that watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and i welcome in advance those that's going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on youtube and the various groups from around the world subsequently as stated last week at the beginning of every year it is incumbent upon myself to start discussing the abc to spirituality and it is necessary to remind ourselves to come back to basics and it is at this level that we have a clear vision of what we need to do in terms of attaining spirituality and we have today vasudeva ramanuj das is present here and he took the other route I used to ask him whether he want to be a Brahma Chari or a Brahma Chali. So in every now and again he was a Brahma Chari and now he decided to get married. So under what category that falls? Brahma Chali all right so he will be getting married next week but i'm sure all of you going to be at satsang i think uh, jessica and uh, sita they'll be arranging so you drive straight from wherever to yeah all right then i want to wish nilendri a happy 68th birthday this is behind the guru guru turned 60 last year october and nilendri turned 60 today with a very old daughter tiveshni <laughs> all right so that is what's happening today and next week then it is important to balance these two you have to live in the material universe but you have to live in the material universe computed with a spiritual understanding that is why this material universe is were created so you live in this material universe computed with spirituality it is a job of the guru to compute into your software which is the mind the reality of the absolute which is spirituality reality of absolute which is spirituality anything material is not everlasting anything material is not ever lasting your parents do not last forever your husbands do not last for ever your wives do not last for ever people that you know your grandparents your great grandparents nobody last for ever but because you do not understand spirituality and you do not understand yourself then when there is detachment from 
people that you've had a relationship with in any form then there is great sorrow but once you become spiritual then you understand that everything in this material universe is temporary everything is temporary and it is only logic and common sense that if you have things that are temporary and if you have something that is eternal and permanent then you should repose all your affection desire and love to that entity that is eternal and permanent it is logical is it not because you know that which is not permanent that which is temporary is going to disappear one day you know that that's logical and that which is permanent and that which never forsakes you under any circumstances that is the supreme lord that is living in your soul he is also living externally at the four corners of this material universe and also in his dimension called vaikunt so when you come to satsang and when you are given information absolute information then you start you need to start changing your consciousness from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness so it's not a very difficult thing because it's as easy as the air conditioner in the back there is a switch there there are controls there and if you turn that air conditioner into a heater all you have to do is let it switch from one mode to the next mode same current the current is the same only thing the consciousness of the of the aircon is of two types one of, one is of heat and one is of cooling similarly your consciousness which is eternally spiritual through karma through karma the consciousness has contracted and through the contraction of the consciousness you have become material consciousness that same consciousness exactly that same consciousness through knowledge through knowledge the switch to change your consciousness is transcendental knowledge transcendental knowledge through transcendental knowledge you can switch your consciousness from material to spiritual live in the same body and do things now in a divine way do things now in a divine way when you come and do aarti and when you bow down you should be leaving your material consciousness at the feet of the guru you should be leaving your material consciousness your mind at the feet of the guru and that is why it is taught as an absolute science that you should stop your mind you should stop your mind because your mind creates all the havoc in the world is created through your mind nothing else is a greater destroyer than the mind and once you neutralize your mind once you put your mind in neutral but it is very difficult for an ordinary human being to put his or her mind in neutral 
And this is why God has created the Guru system. This is why the Supreme Lord has created the Guru system. So the Guru can arrest, help you to arrest your mind. The Guru can assist you to arrest your mind. But you can't come into satsang. You cannot come into satsang with your mind full. With your mind full. When you come to a satsang of this nature, then at the door, you must empty your mind. At the door, you, you must tell yourself, I am zero. I am zero. And when you zero yourself at the door, and when you come and sit on your chair, then your ears can drink in the nectarian transcendental knowledge that is being poured there. But if you know, if you know, then this tran nectarian transcendental knowledge cannot be poured down your ears because your the pail of your mind is already full. The pail of your mind is already full. So once you st start topping it up with this transcendental nectarian knowledge, what happens if your mind is already full? As soon as you reach the gate, you forgot what the Guru said because you came with your own mind full all ready. So it is a Vedic injunction that once you start following a Guru, you can only follow one Guru at a time. How many? One Guru. You can't take advice from two Gurus, three Gurus, four Gurus. You'll be in a state of chaos. Once you have decided the Guru that you're going to follow, then it must be a commitment. It must be a solemn commitment. And then you start taking advice from that one Guru only. One Guru only. Two Gurus, three Gurus, four Gurus. Don't work. Don't work. If you are in metric and if you are studying maths and every quarter you change, you change your maths teacher, you think you're going to pass successfully at the end of the year? Why? Is the syllabus different? Syllabus is the but different teachers know your strengths and know your weaknesses. They know your capacity to assimilate knowledge. And each teacher will teach you in a way that is unique to you. And each teacher will give you at a particular lesson that amount of input that you can take. So if you go to four teachers, in one year and write an exam that's on the same syllabus, you will be very, very confused. Won't you? Because each teacher is unique in his way of teaching, notwithstanding that the syllabus is the same. And this is why you are asked, and this is why I stated, you must do due diligence. So in last week's ABC to spirituality, there was a comment from somebody who says he's been listening to me for a long time and that he heard me saying, Guru finds you, you don't find the Guru, and then he believes that last week's discourse was in total contradiction to when a guru finds you, then why must you 
have due diligence so i saw that comment but so he said this is why i don't pray to a man so i went into the bathroom i came back to comment and i see the comment was deleted then he came back and he commented somebody doesn't like the truth hey all right so i commented i replied i said listen to this week's sunday's discourse and i will explain comprehensively what i meant when the guru finds you and then i the next day when i looked i see that comment has disappeared maybe he doesn't want to get whacked maybe he knows how this guru wax you understand so to answer him as he said he's been uh listening to our discourses there's 200 verses in the guru gita which lord shiva had spoken to mother parvati and if the relationship between guru and disciple is eternal and if the guru always finds the disciple then what is the use of lord shiva speaking the guru gita what is the necessity for lord shiva to speak the guru gita what is the necessity for the supreme lord to speak the bhagavad gita what is the necessity for veda vyas to compile all the vedas because the relationship between guru and disciple is eternal the guru finds the disciple so the disciple should know everything does it make sense does it make sense no you must have information how many of you have been to other gurus before you landed here and other organizations hands up 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Baby, you <laughs> straight to the guru. Only one guru. All right. How many gurus you had? <laughs> Three gurus at the age of four. <laughs> okay. So what it tells you that. that you've been at other places and you are here now what conclusion can you draw from there okay let's let's be practical as i said our satsangs are practical we unpack practically with real life examples so nilesh bhai nilesh bhai Who brought you here, Nilesh Bhai? Who found you? Who brought you to Satsang? Who asked you to come to Satsang? Who? Guru. But did I know you? I didn't know you. So let's use this family. On a Monday, Mama is not here. You can verify. On a Monday, Mama was sick and tired of being. sick and tired <laughs> mama was sick and tired of being sick and tired and he was sitting with his favorite sister premila having supper i don't know whether he was having it with a nip and meat he didn't describe but we can ask him had he been here we could have trapped him so he told his sister that i want to find my guru i want to find my guru i hope i find my guru that was on a monday on that saturday they were driving past the m19 they saw the ashram and the driver was rakesh bhai 
and he came up. It's not easy to find this place from the M19. This ashram has an entrance of Vasati Drive. So he came, he looked around until he found this ashram and he drove down here. So he was the principal person to land at the ashram. I want you to underline principal person. First person to come to this ashram. He came with Mama. Mama transformed within two weeks, 100% because Mama closed his mind, he emptied his mind outside the door. When he came here, he came here only to listen to the Guru's instructions. And whatever instructions Guru gave Mama, Mama took it 100% and a great miracle happened in his life, which he can explain to you. I don't want to discuss on this platform. That which happened was impossible. That what happened was impossible. And on my first meeting with Mama, I told him that is going to happen and he said never. All right. And his sister also said never would him. Feathers of a bird. All right. Or oh, birds of a so in the following week, that miracle happened and since then, that miracle continues to be in existence. Mama has transformed 100 per cent. Because when he had that desire, the Supreme Lord, which lives in the soul of every human entity, drove him through Rakesh to the ashram. And the Guru, through the family, brought Nilesh Bhai here, who is initiated. Nilesh is the only initiated member of his family. Rakesh Bhai has maybe 5% interest in the ashram. No reality. All right, but look at the Vedic injunction that says the Guru finds you. Mama's desire brought Mama himself and also brought Nilesh Bhai who took initiation. Then you got Strini sitting there who was playing the harmonium. Two weeks after meeting the Guru, he left alcohol and he left meat. Alcohol and meat because when you meet your guru eventually that's what you do. When you meet your guru eventually that's what you do. It's a Vedic injunction. So when I'm teaching you ABC to spirituality I am teaching also those that are here that still need to find the Guru. I am not everyone's Guru in this satsang. Some of you will be here for a few years and then you leave and some of you will stick it out because here yeah, there's a lot of Tivashni lot of equal amount of food. Every satsang would equal amount of whacking. I whack you and then I feed you. So some at some stage might not be able to tolerate the whacking. Those that cannot tolerate the whacking, they do not belong here. And those that tolerate anything, they belong here. But those that do not belong here, I have to teach you how to behave in terms of the Guru principles. And this is why I am teaching you the ABC to spirituality. So when you find your Guru, 
whenever that is i've already taught you how to behave with your guru and those that are my disciples eternally you are also here and you also need to learn you also need to learn how to discipline yourself in terms of having a relationship with your guru all of you understand all of you understand so this is the explanation that i'm giving that brother who was confused and he didn't want to pray to a man he said that is why you do not pray to a man actually nobody has asked anybody to pray to a man there's no vedic injunction you must find one man and go and pray to a man there's no vedic injunction and we have these amche professors because they haven't opened up the bhagavad gita they have not studied those who are amche professors you will know have not opened the bhagavad gita and have not studied once you studied the bhagavad gita then you become a prostrated disciple and not a amche professor in sanatan dharma sanatan dharma does not recognize amche professors sanatan dharma recognizes prostrated surrendered devotees of the supreme personality of godhead are there any questions jessica is back after a very long time she doesn't even know how to sit in a satsang and listen anymore jessica yeah well we congratulate you on behalf of the sri narayan dham has been a grand grandma a grandmother to an adorable girl and i think jessica will lose all her badra kali potency i think she left it now in johannesburg she'll just be a normal jessica and my poor satish bhai he can be at peace in life now all right that's what happens yeah that's what happens through generations all right nilendra and tivashni has her girl then all your badra kali will go away there <laughs> then you can live a peaceful life all right so quickly we need to understand our existence on this planet earth and the universe itself why there is so much of vices where these vices come from and how these vices can be negated for any problem we, that needs to be solved we need to know the cause we cannot fix a problem at the symptom we cannot fix a problem at the symptom we need to fix it at the cause and the lord has given us adequate information for us to understand what we are doing on this planet earth what are we really doing on this earth why are we here on this earth what is the reason of our existence in this material universe we need to start there if we do not start there we cannot fix anything along the way we cannot fix anything along the way
Are we here to go to school, educate ourselves, find a partner, get married, have children, be successful and prosperous in life, and then die? Is this what our life is about? Is this why humans exist? Because if you look at monkeys, they also take the birth, they also have offsprings, they also monkey around and eventually they also die. If you look at plants, story is the same. So what is the purpose of human life? All other life forms exhibit the same traits. A human is exhibiting, only thing humans get married and then have offsprings. That's a uniqueness. Well, not all, but that should be how it's supposed to be in society. So what is the purpose of human life? I want to read a few verses from the Srimad Bhagavatam so that once you understand your existence then you, will, you can understand how to navigate this life successfully as a human being. Brahma first created the nescient engagements like self-deception, the sense of death, comma, anger after frustration, comma, the sense of false ownership, comma, and the illusory bodily conception comma, or forgetfulness of one's real identity. So, self-deception. What is self-deception? I believe I am the body. That is self-deception. It is an Automated thinking since birth. Automated thinking since birth. The sense of death. Our fear for of death. Anger after frustration. Anger after frustration. Shanti? Have you ever had anger after Hemita frustrated you? Infinite amount of number of times. You know that, Hemita? You remember your mom's anger after frustration? The sense of false ownership. Sense of false ownership illusory bodily conception all the ladies in the house illusory bodily conception all of you that dressed up lipstick cosmetics wasted time in the front of the mirror delayed everyone delayed the family to come to satsang Who you blame? Who you blame? Now you'll have somebody to blame. Lord Brahma. He injected this into the material atmosphere. Lord Brahma, at creation, he injected anger, he injected the sense of false ownership, 
he injected self deception he injected illusory body conception of forgetfulness of one's real identity so when you was immersed into this atmosphere these vices these vices were already computed these vices were already computed by lord brahma into this atmosphere so this anger is not just coming from somewhere this is god's creation and god's creation is absolutely perfect and scientific and whatever exists in this universe well thought of and well formulated so when a child is born when a child is born then yamraj who yamraj has a spreadsheet of all the merits and demerits of the child and mother durga places this child mother durga places this child in a perfectly managed system where this child will get 1 teaspoon of anger half a teaspoon of self deception the recipe for the child's destiny the recipe for the child's destiny is already pre ordained relative to its karma of merits and demerits of a previous lifetime you understand so the amount you of anger that you have today you received it from the reservoir of lord brahma lord brahma already filled the reservoir of anger a reservoir of self deception a reservoir of false identity and when you was born the system the system injected into your body the amount of these vices as per your previous karmas so if you have a huge anger problem it didn't come from anywhere it was prescribed by yourself from your previous lifetime and that is your anger problem that is your arrogance all these vices are computed in the atmosphere all of you understand so when you come to satsang when you come to your guru then your guru has capacity and insight into your levels of the vices that you are computed with and the guru needs to reprogram your samsara reprogram your samsara your samsara is your recording of all your lifetimes and its permutations your recording of all your lifetimes and its permutation which is embedded in your mind which is embedded in your mind and it is the job of a guru to reprogram your mind reprogram your mind and limit your anger limit your arrogance lim- limit all your negative tendencies put a hold put a pause on your negative tendencies and try and cultivate you 
and try and cultivate you by giving these courses, by asking you to come to satsang, by doing seva, by getting involved in ashram work, by getting involved in the ashram, the Guru uses all these modes, all these modes to fine tune all your addictions. So no two people can be transformed equally. Everyone is unique. Everyone's merits and demerits are different. And although you may be seated in one class, the Guru have to work with you differently. The Guru have to work with you differently. So that at the end, you are successful on the spiritual platform. All of you understand? But the effort need to come from you. The effort and the intention and the faith have to come from you. There is no magic. There is no magic. There never was magic. There never was magic. All right. If your things don't work out, you can't blame the Guru. You only have to blame yourself. And if you want to see any change, if you want to see any change, the change must come from you first. When you change, then things around you will change. As long as you don't change, nothing will change. Nothing will change. Whatever you need in life, you can motivate it through your own change. You have to make that 180 degrees change. And I'm repeating, I'm saying this again. If you come to a satsang of a guru, you have to zero your knowledge. Have to zero your knowledge. Why? Let's be logical. Why are you at the Guru Satsang? Why are you here? If you know what's the reason to be here. I'm saying if you know Sita, there's no reason to be here. You must only be here if you don't know. Relationship with the Guru is when I don't know. Not when I know. When you know, this satsang can't work for you. When you know, this satsang can't work for you. Only if you don't know, then, then, this satsang can work for you. And one guru at a Sita, how many gurus you had? How many you had? Answer the question. More than five? All right. One guru at a time, Sita. When things don't work out here, Sita, you can go find another guru. But as long as you hear instructions from one guru only. And Sita is also a living example. When guru gave her certain instructions, she never listened to the guru. She told the guru her own decisions. And every day she cries for the Guru, please change it back. Guru can't because you made that decision yourself. You must not, if the Guru say turn left and you say no Guru, I'll turn right. Then the Guru will let you turn right. And when you fall down the cliff, you fall in alone. That is how strict 
the guru system is. If guru say turn right, then you have to turn right because the all guru already saw all your roadblocks and all your hassles you're going to have. And that is why the guru told you to turn right. Guru sees everything when you walk in here. Day you walk in there, the guru sees everything. Then piecemeal at a time, piecemeal at a time, the guru gives you personal information how to move. Be like Satish and Jessica. We are in a unique relationship. Reason we are in a unique relationship is because when I was not a guru, I knew Jessica. And we worked together. We worked together for, I think, a few years. A few years we worked together. And the uniqueness is that when I became a guru, Jessica did not ask me when, how, why, who, where, nothing. No questions. And she accepted. And then we invited her because of I. I had known her previously in the material world. And she attended a few satsangs. Satish Bhai was, and quite rightfully so, he couldn't understand how all of this could happen. You know somebody. My wife worked with this man when he was a politician. Now he's a guru. My wife still wants to work with him. How is this possible? <laughs> so it took him a while to get acquainted with this truth. But he did. And he's one of the most disciplined followers of this institution currently. Very, very disciplined. No questions, no stories, and he's been blessed with a beautiful granddaughter. All right. Now, guaranteed, I can take the chicken away. <laughs> guaranteed, the chicken is gone. I was waiting. I was waiting. He has his granddaughter. And his granddaughter will always be more important than the chicken. So I got satisfied. This is how unique this system <laughs> is. And this is how intelligent the guru has to be. Because for everyone there's a different solution. And satisfied solution is his baby on top. Very soon there will be no meat in that mochri. Very, very soon. His mochri will be full of vegetables. All right. So I want to wish you all well in this 2023. I advise you all to make small commitments. I advise you all to make small commitments. Live in that commitment for three months. If you are successful, then make another small commitment. I met Guruji in 2008. I only became a fully fledged 100% disciple in 2013. I stopped alcohol immediately. I stopped cigarettes in 2012, four years after meeting Guruji. And I had a great problem with meat. Meat was my failure. I kept failing year after year after year. Only in 2013, three days before going to India. How many days? Three days before going to India, I stopped meat fully. All right? So don't rush. It took me five years. There's no hurry and there's no rush. Leave small things. Leave small and easy things first. Small and easy things first. And if you do that, you'll be successful. Check yourself after three months. 
whether you really changed, how much you changed, how much difference. The ashram must have a tangible difference in your life. If the ashram is not having a tangible difference in your life, then it is not necessary to keep coming to ashram if the ashram is not changing you. Ashram is not a casino. You don't come here and every week and pull the arthi lever, bow down by the guru, hoping one day things will come right. Yeah, ashram is an absolute science. Ashram is an absolute science. I've given you all the information thus far and you can go on YouTube and check. I've given you everything to become spiritual. I don't want you to waste your petrol, waste your two, three hours, waste your donations at the ashram if I cannot make a tangible change in your life. If I can't make a tangible change in your life. You, I'm not asking, I'm not saying you're going to become a multimillionaire, your wife will become the best wife, your husband will become the best husband. Those things you're not going to find here. When I send you to Vekund, you're going to find your ideal life in Vekund. But the amount of anger that you express should be depleted should be depleted as you are in this ashram. Aver? Can you quantify your wife's anger? From the time she landed here until today. Has it decreased? Is it stable? Is it unstable? Has it increased? Look at how many deities are watching you. Don't look at your wife. <laughs> look at from there, Lord Narayan, Mother Lakshmi, Lord Shiva. My granddaughter thought Lord Shiva's nose was not for real. She crawled from there yesterday, the small one, and touched his nose. <laughs> All right? Aver Bhai, look at the deities and answer. Huh? decreased. For true Ashmika? Yes. So this is what we want to, this is tangible, this is for real. Now you can put your 200 rand petrol in your BMW, BMWs take more petrol, maybe 100 rand just to go up our driveway. <laughs> it's worth it. 200 rand Sunday, a calm wife, calm wife, who won't pay? Maybe in the side you need to come and pay a little bit more in the kutir, <laughs> Abir Bhai. <laughs> Don't you think? Well worth it. Yeah, before coming to satsang, you was asking God, God, please. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Okay, are there any questions? Jessica is out, Ashmika. Now I think I'll deal with you. <laughs> Jessica's anger is on, uh, if you dial, if you see the dial, it's on zero. <laughs> are there any questions? Any questions? Okay, for those of you that are going... Uh, uh, to Vasan's uh, wedding. I uh, wish you all well on that side. Please behave. Please behave. Everybody must behave and don't forget satsang. Don't forget satsang. Everyone must be back here half past ten. All right. Even though Vasudeva is getting married, satsang cannot be cancelled. Jai Shri Narayan.